we have officially arrived to our third country of full-time travel. Welcome to Colombia. We are basing our time here in Colombia in this wonderful city of Medellin, which is the second largest city in all of Colombia. Uh, it is a town of about 2.5 million people and it is bustling compared to what we saw in Costa Rica. Um, we arrived about two days ago actually. We spent the first couple of days just kind of catching up on vlogs, relaxing after our travel day, and actually taking a free walking tour of the city, which we really, really love. But now we are going to make our first video here in Colombia on one of the most popular destinations here in Medellin. I saw it recommended over and over again, and that is Comuna 13 or Comuna 13 in Spanish. I love our walk to the metro. It is so windy to just try and get all the way over there. So just a bit of background on Comuna 13. Historically, it was known to be one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Medellin and therefore the world. Back in the 80s and 90s, Medellin went through a horrible traumatic time of fighting related to drug cartels. There were bombings all over the cities. Uh, and Comuna 13 was really at the epicenter of that and it was known as a place where you just don't go. Today though, uh, we're going to be taking a tour that is going to show us the big resurgence of the city. One of the things we're most impressed by here in Medellin is their incredible metro system. It is really clean, really efficient, and I mean, it is incredibly unique as well. You're about to see in a second one of the most unique parts of the metro that I've ever seen before. And since Medellin is built into a valley and you know communities are raised up into the valley, they've built a gondola system that's actually part of the metro. So the same car that can get you on the all the trains that run all around the city takes you up on the gondola that's right behind us all the way up into the communities. So we're about to do that right now and I'm really excited because I've never experienced anything like this. We have uh, six cable cars in the city. Uh -huh. This one was the second one to be built. Uh -huh. Uh, the first one was in 2002. Okay. And uh, Medellin actually was the first city in the world to use cable cars as a way of regular transportation. Wow. I didn't even know it was a thing. I couldn't even name you another city that has one. Yeah, same here. Most people don't think that it's this developed. Before 2016, you didn't see tourists here. Okay. You yeah. just saw people like going to work and coming back home. I think it's a very smart way to get around. Yeah. So yeah. just flying over. Yeah, by so 2000. 35, the government wants to have at least 11 cable cars in the whole, in the whole city. Cool. And okay. So I was telling him that you see the yellow, the, the building with the yellow windows down there? Mm -hmm. Like all the way down there, this way is coming at 13. Okay, got okay. it. Here, yep. It's absolutely massive and very dense. What was the population you said here? Uh, 142,000. Yeah, all in a very small area. So. You said you grew up in the neighborhood. Uh, what was it like? in the 90s here compared to how does it feel now? Oh, it's, it's way, way different. <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I, I was hopeless. You know, like I never thought that my life was going to change. Yeah. I never thought uh, my family was going to get like a better life. And right now, in a day, in a good day, we can have, I don't know, six or 7,000 people from all over the world visiting. That's amazing. So that is creating like a new economy. Yeah. So actually now we have a, a huge window to show the talent in Camino 13. So I love that. Because now we need we need we have the we have the talent. We always have had it. Wow. We just needed the window to show it. And now there is a lot of people like doing interesting things over here. Yeah, and whenever you them. do a search on Medellin, I mean Camino 13 is one of the first things to come up. So like it's made a huge turnaround for one of the most dangerous neighborhoods ever. Like he was just describing all the military campaigns that were happening here to try to regain control of the guerrilla uh, from the guerrillas in the early 2000s to now like having tours here just what 20 years later like that's crazy that's mm -hmm. quite the turnaround. So I feel really lucky and honored today that um, our tour guide that's showing us around the neighborhood actually grew up here in the 90s and so we're not going to share any of his stories just because I feel like it's very personal but it's just sort of high key summary I mean he was just talking about how violent it was growing up here. I mean, from the age of five to 11, you know, just passing dead bodies on the way to school and you just become so acclimated and used to it that it kind of don't see the humanity of it anymore, but it just feels like a normal day in the life here. And so to be able to get a tour and to hear the stories of this neighborhood, it's just so wonderful to 
hear his perspective and to see how much this neighborhood is changed. So the first part of the tour that we went up to was just a neighborhood. It's a very residential area, but it has some great views of the city. And now we're going to more of the touristy area that has a lot more colorful buildings. You're saying it's a little bit more gentrified and things like that. <laughs> Hola. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> La comida sabrosa. Sí. Deliciosa. La comida sabrosa. Mira, con un hambre. ¿Cuál es su, cuál es su uh, plato favorito de comida? Bandeja paisa. Bandeja paisa. Bandeja paisa. Bandeja paisa. Okay, we'll try that. Salpicón. ¿Qué más? Salpicón. Salpicón es like a mix of fruits. Probably we're gonna see it in the way. Okay. Like uh, it's like a kind of a juice with uh, seven different fruits. Can any of you dance? No bailar. ¿Quién baila? Espectacular. We learn uh, how to dance when we are uh, kids. You know, oh, yeah. our aunts and so, so your mom is basically like. And dance with your aunts, you know. So we learned like a lot. Probably they know how to dance salsa, you know, like reggaeton, you know, all that. That's so great. Yeah, we can. What we have now is murals. Okay. They are way, way different. Do you find that the graffiti is more related to like the gangs? And this uh, is no. Or no? Actually, it's in Colombia, it's not like that. It's that's the weird thing because graffiti in Colombia was brought by rich people. Mm. Or or yeah. uh, not graffiti like the hip hop in general. Yeah. Because they were the ones ha that had the money to go to New York. Sure. And they saw it over there, you know. And they brought magazines. They brought like things related to the culture. Then it became something very popular. Now it's like uh, like everyone are into the hip hop culture. The culture came through rich people, mm -hmm. and then poor people take to get. But graffiti never has been related to to gangs. Okay. Strictly. Normally they don't do this. Normally they do this. Yeah. That's it. Period. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Right in front of us here is a wall of remembrance that they have for people that went missing, who were killed between 2002 and 2010. They used to have a bunch of plants here and now they just have this because it was hard to maintain but it's a really nice way of not forgetting and remembering those that were victims. Wow. Very beautiful. We've officially arrived at more of the touristy spot as you can probably tell. It's super colorful and positive and happy. It's just a really nice spot and apparently this is like the most touristy visited spot in the city so I can see why. So. I've been thinking, I've been talking about graffiti, yes. and murals and all that, and they are very different in the way that graffiti, you know, the classic graffiti, let's say, it's just like letters, yeah. like tags, but we don't have that anymore in Criminal 13. Now we have murals, yeah. and the main reason for this is that with this you can deliver a message. Yeah. Come. Yeah. See that mural over there, the first one? Yep. The guy with the, with the white beard? Yeah. That guy represents like the farmers that came here in the late 70s. 80s and 90s trying to find like a new beginning, like a new life. Uh -huh. okay. uh, it was painted by Jomag, okay. so it's just part of the community. Still you know? alive, obviously? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Jomag wow. yeah, is pretty young. I would say Jomag is 20 some, 28, 29 probably. Okay. Then we have Apollo, the guy who painted this, you know, right here. Okay. That represents the community. The blue, the blue roses you see over there could be the times of violence in Canada 13. Yeah. Like because of the uh, prime militaries, because of the government, because of gangs. Yeah. And the person is kind of rejecting this violence. And the white part over there with the dope and the flowers represent a gesture of peace. Is this your first time ever doing graffiti, Ben? It is, actually. Yes. <laughs> what a rebel. Have you done it before? Nope. No, never. Maybe. I don't know. It's a long time ago and it was legal. <laughs> ah, it's not fine. I thought it's bad, I know. <laughs> So go go close to the surface, like probably like two or three inches, and this this fast. Okay. Okay, don't go too fast. Don't go too slow. Okay. Why? Because if you go too slow, or if you go if you if you're far and slow, that the line is really thing is not defined. Okay. So let's say let's say this is my tag. I don't have a tag, but let's say this is my tag. You guys, like have my name, like Gio. It's not my name. It's not. It, it, it shouldn't be your name because it's illegal. So you don't want you don't want police officers to find you. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's something related to me, but it's not my my name. That's and the I tag. Nice line. Is that for kids or uh, no, I guess not. <laughs>
I do need the kid one. Yeah, just show me where that is. <laughs> My favorite one is that one right there. You see that little bird over there? Yep. I think that's a fen fen phoenix. Phoenix, okay. Medellin, Camino 13 is the phoenix of Medellin, in the same way Medellin is the phoenix of Colombia. Yeah. Okay. Is this your first time in Colombia? Yes. Yeah, it is. Did your family or friends freak out when you told yeah, them you were coming to Colombia? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't that the place that was so like the murder capital it. of the yeah. world? <laughs> but, yeah, but it's changed, it's okay. A lot of people think that Colombia and Medellin are like that, like, or the, 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 countries, the country was what it used to be in the 80s and 90s, but yeah. the place has changed a lot. Yeah. So you're seeing the best face of Medellin and doing this, like coming here with, with tourists 20 years ago was impossible. Right. Now, like you see people from all over the world coming here. Even until late, like a lot of people think, even though they do my tour, at the end they think like, oh, it's nice, I would like to come at night, but I guess it's dangerous. It's not, it's not dangerous. Tourists to stay here until 10, 10 30 at night, it's completely okay. Oh, really? Okay. Well, it's not completely okay. Don't come that late, guys. People need to rest. <laughs> he, he, well, yeah. Some peace and quiet. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, like, um, yeah, we reborn from our hashes, right. basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm very happy and very glad that these kind of things are happening because, again, the money that tourism are bringing here, the tourists are, are bringing here, is creating the opportunities that the government didn't create in the past. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, this. We're gonna see the escalators, the famous escalators of Camino 13. Yep. Do you like coffee? Yeah, I love coffee. Okay, we're gonna go to a coffee place. Okay, so we great. can have a nice cup of coffee, we have a break and then we continue. Guys, welcome to the broken escalators of Camino 13. Oh, Hi. wonderful. <laughs> this is our tour guide's neighborhood, so he knows everybody and it's really sweet to experience this through his lens. Yeah. Okay, see you. I think it's just amazing to have this kind of coffee in Camino 13. This is a special coffee. The name is Café del Filo. It's actually a coffee that, um, they buy from small farmers, like a, a small producers, coffee producers sure. in, in Colombia. Okay. Uh, it comes from a town called Santa Barbara, Antioquia. Hola. Yeah, hola. Coffee is a magic thing. Depending on the person, depending on the, the method, like if you use this, if you use this, that, all kind of things. The taste could be really different. Yep. After 1,400 meters above sea level, the taste of the, co the coffee is really good. This one actually is something we call Cafe de Altura because it grows between 1,800 and 2,000 meters. Okay. You know, above sea level. Do you have my coffee at home? Oh, yeah. Like this? Yep. Yeah, it looks the exact same. Listo. The coffee. ¿Qué más? Come on. Oh, okay. Muy bien, ¿y tú? There you go. Yes, yes. Salud. Yeah. Salud. Salud. Oh. That's good. But I want you to notice that even though it's to you, the girl is not happy, she's not smiling, she's actually scared. Sure. She's scared of these birds. Okay. You know, the birds with a helmet and, a, and an armor, they represent like the Blackhawks that were used during this military operation. Right. Also, a couple of tanks were used during Orion. <laughs> Medellin is one of the few cities where you don't need a million dollars to have a million dollars here. So we've just come up six elevators here and I think we started all oh, escalators. So we started six escalators here. We started down in the valley over there. You can see just how dense and compact everything is and we've just been weaving right through it. I'll do the green mango. I'll do passion pizza. Okay. No, I'm going to exactly. No, you know. No, I agree. They add lime juice. Yeah, and salt, you know, like all the time. Do it, yeah, yeah. Why not? Eat the, the thing, you know, you don't have to. Lime juice and Squeezes, salt. spread the glass. Okay. Squeezes. The passion fruit one? Yep. Apparently, this is award winning. You just ate. <laughs> Some of the best see, in the city. Stop. Like, it's to dip in, like the lime juice I is see. to dip in and just. Uh, okay, right. So, dip it. Okay, 
you go. Wow, that's good. It's like a margarita with a It is, I was thinking oh, it was like, kind of reminding okay. me of a tequila shot or a margarita <laughs> with the salt and the that's lime. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, it's good. That's right. Wow, that yeah, really you, is like have, a margarita. Okay, so we kind of got distracted from filming a little bit because we were just getting so immersed into talking with Sergio and seeing his life in his neighborhood. So we ended up getting a beer after our tour time just to talk and learn about all of the initiatives he's taking, how he's trying to build up the community. And we're just so impressed by his drive and his commitment to do better. So to wrap it up, one of the biggest takeaways that he had for us, that he said, you know, if you're gonna take anything away, this is what you should take away. There's a uh, saying that they have in Spanish, that essentially translates to uh, work with your fingernails, basically, or like dig with your fingernails. And, and essentially it means like, work with what you have. And if you have no resources, like you use your fingernails to dig or work or whatever. Uh, and basically what he was saying, how that relates to Comuna 13, is look what they did with just the resources that they had, just with their fingernails, to build up what they have, to, to rise um, from all the violence that they had before into what they have today. And so he said, if we can do that with our fingernails, imagine what you can do with the resources that you have. Um, so I thought that was really powerful, and I think, you know, for us, having being as blessed as we are with the resources that we have, that's a great takeaway for us, because I think it's, uh, you know, it's really powerful. Sometimes we forget how lucky we are. And just to add to that too, they were saying how much the tourism industry right now is greatly benefiting this community. It's amazing how much they've grown in just the last few years. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things for you is to just say, come here. We feel so safe, we feel so comfortable, and we feel so, so welcomed. Consider coming here, spending your time and your resources to support this country and this city because they deserve it and it's wonderful. So. They do. Yeah, it was a once in a lifetime experience. It's it's so vibrant, so amazing. Yeah. So with that, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe it and stay tuned for more Columbia videos. See Bye. you next week.